Hey, it's Don here from The Board. Thank you for joining me today on another video. Um, I guess to start off with, this video is, I'm going to call it a part zero on the introduction to making your own PCB using the KiCad or KiCad program. A few videos ago, uh, a couple of live streams ago, I put out a video that was introducing the concept of a couple of different programs, a couple of different websites that helped you make your own keycaps, make your own cases, and also designing your own PCB. Now the three things that I showed in that video was the keyboard layout editor, the KLE, the PCB and plate builder, also known as Swirl KB, and then also a sort of tutorial that was released on GitHub on building your own PCB using KiCad, KiCad, depending on however you want to pronounce it. Now I'm quite familiar with using both KLE and the Squill KB websites and, and sort of their apps there, but I had never actually used the KiCad program to design or create a PCB. And I thought, well, I probably should put my money where my mouth is and give it a try. So I did. And I put together a layout, uh, a layout that I'd kind of been playing around with the idea for for a while, one that I'd been toying with, and then I tried to work my way through the tutorial to build a PCB that would be suitable for it. Now, we're not actually going to go through that particular creation of mine. Uh, it's kind of got a couple of hiccups here and there, but it was a really good learning experience. So I thought that I would go through the tutorial kind of step by step, not exactly, and follow what they recommend, but sort of show how easy it actually is to do some of the parts and some of the things that you might sort of just come across that might not necessarily be completely intuitive, and hopefully that might be a benefit. So anybody who might have looked at the tutorial like I did initially and said, well, that's really complicated, you can at least watch what I'm doing and then see if it's really within your capability and I think for most people it really is you just have to be aware of a couple of small things here and there and uh, yeah enjoy having fun making PCBs now before I start getting into that and the reason why this is called a part zero is it can be helpful just to understand the whole idea about building a keyboard matrix because the PCB is essentially what you're doing you're building a matrix to mount switches onto now talking to Nice and Creamy, who has done a lot of PCB sort of design work as well as doing hand wires and fixing keyboards, he's kind of like the uh, soldering technician of sorts, keyboard services technician, as they uh, kind of described him on the Top Clack episode I was in a little while ago. And he said to me, if you want to build a PCB, he highly advises you to first hand wire a keyboard because it gives you a better understanding and feel about how the keyboard matrix works. I haven't actually built a hand wired yet. I would love to, and it's one of my projects that I certainly want to get in on doing at some point in the future. But to start off with, I thought, why not just do kind of like a, a very super light theory on how the keyboard matrix is and the way it's set up, and then go from there. So we're going to go down and uh, use my impromptu whiteboard. And uh, yeah. Let's switch off the camera up there first. All right, and I'd like to say thank you to uh, our self-professed number one fan for the board, Outrage Porting on Reddit, for sending me this lovely postcard um, all the way from Marseille. So thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Let's just put that aside for the moment. So how does a keyboard kind of work? Um, if you ever read tutorials or if you see the pictorials and tutorials that people have, it's quite simple, to be honest. There are a couple of components that are always necessary for building a keyboard using hand wires. And the first, of course, is an array of switches. So, switches, um, you can sort of just consider a symbol, nice and simple like that. And so I'm going to build just a simple 2x2, two two, which is the same example in the KiCad tutorial. Okay, just like that. And 
Of course, when you actually close that switch, you're making a contact and you have an electrical path. Then, what you need is diodes. And I've got to get this right, because obviously, uh, <laughs> if you don't get it right, your keyboard kind of doesn't work. So I'm just going to uh, check out what's happening there. OK, so your diode, according to the schematic, is essentially going to be running down and across and down and across. And then that's going to be running down, and across, down and across. Now, for those who don't know much about electronics, and I definitely don't know very much about electronics, mm -hmm. I certainly do not profess to be highly knowledgeable. I did uh, high school physics and a little bit of university ooh, wrong direction. A little bit of university physics and yeah not very much so there are a lot of people out there who certainly know a lot more than I do but diodes are essentially directional limiters. Uh, this arrow symbol and this line essentially says you have current that passes through it in this direction but it cannot go back up again. And this essentially, uh, I guess, prevents current from going places that it shouldn't go. Okay. Now we have some interconnections as well in terms of just uh, our, our wiring. And we go from our closed path there and our closed path is going to go there, if that makes sense. And then we actually have additional connections which are going to run from there on out and there on out and we're using a lot of colors right now and there on out and there on out so what is actually happening here uh, it's obviously just a bunch of lines right now if you're kind of new to this and and I had to do a bit of thinking and reading to sort of get my head around it as well but what you've actually got is two columns. So we're just going to follow how they've done it in the tutorial. Column 0 and column 1. Then over on this side, you've got two rows. So you've got row 0 and row 1. Having these switch points open means electricity isn't going anywhere because the paths are completely locked up. There's, there's no flow for it to go. But the moment that you close one of these, for example, let's close that switch there, then you've got a flow that allows electricity to travel through the switch, through the diode, and then out via a row. What's not happening is the connection here means the electricity is still actually stopping because the switch is closed here and the electricity passing here cannot go back up because the diode prevents that from happening. Now off to one side is a controller. So there's a controller and it's got a whole bunch of pins on it depending on what it has and commonly there's going to be your USB and each one of these rows and columns actually gets a pin assignment and so switching colors again just as example then that's going to be row 0 row 1 and then you'll have column 0 column 1 so when you depress a switch and current passes through the column and the row you will receive signals that occurs at each one of those pins and according to the programming in your microcontroller it will determine using the software if it receives signals across these pinouts then it equals a particular key assignment so if you set that to say you know the number one when it receives a signal from row zero column zero it says oh look here's my assignment I'm gonna spit out a one to the computer via the USB and that's pretty much the guts of how key switch matrix for a keyboard works and depending on what you've got going on and how many switches that you've actually got in your matrix 
it can get complicated because if you look at a standard layout, unless if you're building an ortholinear, for example, completely with one U keys, you're not going to get exact lining ups. And so what I mean by that is if we have a look at the Philco here in front of me, just going to use the pen as a pointer, these will be potentially in one row. Sorry, in one column. But then this next series will go row 0, 1, 2, 3, but then that will be perhaps the next one in the column. And then you'll have the next column, row 1 or 0, 1, 2, 3, and then now it kicks off over here. When you move on to the next column, then you have to decide, well, am I going to stick with column 3, row 0, 1, 2, 3, but then do I leave the bottom blank? Do I include the spacebar switch in that column? Or do I make the spacebar in the next column, which is going to be the column 4, as they row 0, 1, 2, 3, row 4. So if you're hand wiring a keyboard, it's always advisable to sort of just plot out, plan out, just on a bit of paper or something like that, or on the computer screen, what your matrix assignment is going to be, because later on when you actually come to program your controller depending on what software you've got or if there's a GUI that can help you program it you can get your assignments incorrect and then obviously when you bootload and the assignments not working correctly you'll have to try and figure out what row and column it actually belongs to to get that assigned key press switch so hopefully that kind of made sense in regards to what's going on now obviously if I've made a mistake here I'm more than happy to accept that I've made a mistake and please comment below and correct me. I don't mind being corrected, especially because if I'm wrong and then that way everyone can see it, you know, I'll sort of favorite the comment and it can be bumped up at the top so people can be aware of that. And if necessary, of course, I'll add annotations and notes. So that's kind of like the part zero. Um, the next thing that I want to do with the part zero is just setting up the keycad and how you can uh, get into some pitfalls with folders as well. So let me just clear that off, go that, and we shall switch screens. Now, for those who may not have actually seen my video that I was talking about earlier where I introduced KLE as well as Swill KB and this tutorial, the tutorial that we're talking about is this guy. So you can find it, uh, it's github.com and then it's Rui Kimao, I'm assuming obviously the username, um, and it's the keyboard tack PCB tack guide. Okay, I will put this link in the bottom of the video as well so it's easy to find. And like I said in the other video, it's quite extensive, it's, it's a long page, it's got a lot of info, some really good screenshots to explain what's going on, and you know, it tells you where you can get bits and pieces and so on and so forth. So, obviously I'm not just going to run through uh, installing the keycad because I've already installed it. Um, I did actually download the three component libraries that they talk about here. So that component library, the footprint library, the switch footprint library. And I stuck them in a particular folder that obviously I know the location of so we can get to them quickly and easily. And I've put them into just this because I'm just going to create a little two by two to follow the tutorial. Okay, and they're the actual current names at the time that I downloaded them. And they're just zip files rather than individuals. The first pitfall that I fell into was I had some problems trying to get some of my folders to actually load in the component library. And the reason for that is because the actual component assignment requires it to end in dot pretty, not pretty tag master. So I'm just going to unpack all three of those. Uh, extract here. Okay. And the first thing that I would be doing now is I'm just going to get rid of that. So it just ends in dot pretty. Okay. Now the keycad library TMK master you can leave as that because I don't think that's an issue. Right. So if you do that, that'll certainly get you out of trouble a little bit later. So now we go back to KiCad and we're going to boot up and create a new project. Um, and I've actually done that. I've called it the 2x2. Two two. So when you boot into KiCad, it kind of looks like this. You're not going to have some of the things here because I've actually sort of 
played around and preloaded and I've also created the actual uh, structure, the, the file name, and that's why you can see the uh, keycad 2x2 there, PCB, and the schematic, the SCH file right there. So the, uh, let me just bring back that, okay. So there's the uh, double click on your sheet and you should be able to see that empty schematic sheet. Um, then the first thing that we want to do is we're going to add that component library. So preferences, component libraries, add and the keyboards parts.lib from the Hasu library. So let's go back to keycad and if we open the schematic, it looks like that. We're going to go up to preferences, component libraries. I'm going to drag that across so you can see that there. We'll hit add and we'll navigate to my 2x2 two two. and the library that they're talking about is the keycad lib tmk master and the keyboard parts lib just like that and you'll see it ends up actually on the bottom of the list there. So and you can shuffle it all the way up to the top uh, if you like which makes it easier to find components and we're just going to uh, hit OK. So we've moved it to the list and uh, click OK. We're ready to go. So that's going to be it for this part zero of the introduction to using KiCad. I will be putting out obviously more bits and pieces so that it's a little bit easier to watch in chunks rather than long extended videos on the hold build process. Don't worry, I will be going through each bits of this tutorial online on this PCB guide and then yeah, we can stumble our way through making this 2x2 two two together. So, oh, losing my cursor there, working across two screens. Let's get rid of that. Um, so yeah, Hopefully I'll be able to put out a couple more videos in parts, breaking it up so it's not going to be too tedious watching the whole lot in one fat stream because I spent a couple of hours actually trying to play around and build my own PCB. But with this 2x2 two two, hopefully it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. Um, and also because of the fact that I have limited amounts of time in small blocks depending on what you know my baby is doing and things that I have to get done around the house. So thank you for tuning in, um, obviously would appreciate your likes shares and subscribe if you haven't already and you can also check out our weekly podcasts as usual at www.theboardpodcast.com we have had people asking about uh, how they can actually get sort of in regards to our podcast so they don't have to hunt around for them we do have an itunes uh, link as well and we do have an rss feed so you can check us out using your favorite podcast program or app as long as you hook up to that RSS. But you can find all of those details at the top of our theboardpodcast.com website. So until the next video, where I'll go through a bit more on building your own PCB using KiCad, happy clacking.